Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we meet at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we're off a little bit. Is this surprising? The answer is no. We're on the end of uh, fund buying. Uh, generally, on average, over the last 20 years, uh, you can look for about a percent and a half higher on average. Uh, and when it's over, you can uh, look at maybe three quarters of a percent lower uh, as the fund buyers exit. So there's a uh, bullish bias in the last uh, two days, first three days, uh, trading days of the month. Uh, when that's over, uh, that bias pulls out a little bit, but leaves about half of it. Uh, we're off about seven tenths of a percent uh, right now. So surprising, no. Uh, jobs numbers, of course, uh, at 8.30 tomorrow morning. I'll go back into my list of stuff here. Uh, and uh, that's it. So uh, really not a lot that's unexpected here. Of course, uh, the question is, uh, we pulled back yesterday with very light volume. Uh, today again. Sorry, another sneeze time out. Uh, we've got uh, about 6.3 billion shares. So a very light pullback yet again today. As I said, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe a little weaker into Friday. Uh, I think the thing we need to be looking forward, we don't know what the jobs numbers are going to look like, but we can uh, think about... Uh, then maybe moving in the morning and maybe setting the tone for the day. But uh, the golden week uh, being over and traders coming back from China, the question is whether or not they're going to take the bullish tone up that we've had the last few days and maybe add a little bit uh, to it. Uh, when I look at a lot of the other things, like uh, I use some wisdom of the crowd indicators uh, that are uh, in my newsletter sometimes, those actually continue to show that we could have yet another good week uh, before any significant pullback in the market. Uh, probably the bigger thing out here that I think is going to affect the market long term, or medium, let's call it medium term, uh, through the end of the year, uh, is OPEC uh, plus uh, production cuts and the uh, uh, decision by the uh, current administration of the United States uh, to double down on uh, taking uh, crude out of uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Uh, we're down below the levels that we saw in 1978. So we're 20, what is that, 44 years in rearview mirror uh, for the lowest amount of the uh, uh, reserves we have. The question is, at what point could we not field a Navy uh, by not having enough uh, reserves? And the, that answer is fairly soon. So we're getting to the point where we would not be able to respond. Now, let's just say it's not a military action. Let's say that it's just another hurricane in the Gulf that shuts down 13 of the biggest producing offshore oil wells we have in the country. The uh, It's kind of the same thing as uh, planning a trip in an airplane, maybe a small airplane. You know it's going to take you three hours to get there, and you have three hours and 15 minutes worth of fuel, and the wind's... Uh, are kind of in your face a bit. Maybe they're just a little stronger than you think. Uh, all that fuel uh, that you could have put in the plane if it wasn't full, 
uh, doesn't do you any good uh, back at the place you took off from. But you want to have uh, at least some kind of pillow uh, for uh, any kind of disruptions. And at least probably through all of next year, there's no real question about refilling it yet. Uh, and of course, we'll have to refill it uh, where we actually emptied it on an average basis of about $25 per barrel with uh, 85, 88. And of course, if we start refilling it, uh, that could easily take us through $100 or $110 a barrel gas. So I'm going to continue to say that one easy trade going forward uh, is probably going to be energy. There may be some soft spots as uh, in the uh, uh, of Contango uh, up here where the uh, next month may be still a little soft. Uh, but as soon as they turn the spigots off, and we know there's almost nothing left uh, in the reserves, uh, energy may be the easiest trade going forward. 877-927-6648. We'll have Tim Ord on uh, at the uh, next break. And uh, see what else do we have here. Let's do a little history and we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And somebody says we've got some issues. I don't, everything sounds really good in my headphones, so I don't know anything else about that. Uh, okay. Let's see. You want to reconnect? Talking to my engineer here now. Sounds awful in the din. Okay. Getting very staticky. Well, we'll reconnect uh, during the break. We'll try to get through this segment here uh, with a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1942, Chester Carlson has issued a patent on the process called electrophotography, uh, now commonly known as photocopying. It wasn't until 1946 that a company had any interest in pursuing uh, this commercially. The Halloid Company, isn't that uh, bad breath, uh, finally licensed Carlson's patent and created the world's first uh, Xerox photography to differentiate it from the traditional photography. Eventually, photocopying became such a large part of the company's revenue that Halloid changed its name to Xerox. That's good now. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Who knows? I think a lot of that is just uh, uh, we have uh, temporary uh, issues with uh, Internet speeds. And sometimes they just pull back. You, know? but you never know. Okay, see what else here we've got. Uh, as we go to the break, we'll have a Tim Ord after it. If you want the charts, make sure and email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, down, uh, what is that, uh, 25 on the S&P, down 270, and 262 on the Dow, NASDAQ off 31. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we return, we want to uh, welcome. Tim Ord back on the lines again. Tim Ord has uh, been in the markets for over 40 years. I uh, had a what uh, a 30 year run already as a newsletter uh, writer. Won uh, several awards for Timer of the Year in many different segments of uh, trading, and uh, we want to uh, welcome him uh, back to the microphones. How you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. Um, okay, can you, get my can you hear me good? Yeah, uh, a little bit fuzzy, but I guess you're in the tor you're in the hurricane uh, stuff down there. So, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine. Uh, why don't okay. we? I've got uh, chart one up here. If you want to get started. All right. Um, well, actually, uh, how how is uh, how you dealing with the hurricane down there? I don't know. Uh, are you by I Tampa? I lost power for about 30 minutes. And that's that all? That's about the extent of what happened here in Tampa, at least in my area. I know some people are uh, uh, were worse off uh, inland than out here on the area that we're at. But the uh, farther south you went, the uh, bigger the impact. So not okay. much uh, happening. They cleaned up everything, at least in my neck of the woods, uh, within probably 12 hours. And like I said, I think I lost power for 30 or 45 minutes and it came back on and that has been it. The effect wow. So not much. Good uh, for you. Just, uh, huh? Good for you. Yep. Well, uh, it's been a long run since uh, Tampa has actually been hit. It's one of the hardest to hit geographically for a storm. They tend to either hit down there in Fort Myers uh, or, or in Venice or go up to the Panhandle in Pensacola. Uh, they, it's not that they don't never hit. It's uh, that uh, if it hits the uh, West Coast, it's about one in 10 chance that it hits uh, somewhere around Tampa. Always either hits south of us or goes north. So a good place to live if you're looking for a place down here in Florida. Okay. All right. So, well, good. Well, anyhow, uh, do you want to we'll take a look at that first chart um 
because it's kind of, it's kind of looks at the bigger picture, which is uh, this chart goes back to um, looks like about 2007, and it's American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratio, and that's exactly what it is, just a ratio of what the public thinks about the market. Or, uh, um, well, actually, yes, it's a, a pretty good poll, uh, but every time it got below 40, we got down in the, I think it's like 21 or so here recently, but we're back up to 33, which is still below 40. So, uh, in my opinion, we're still kind of banging out a low here, um, uh, but we're awful close to a meaningful low, I'll put it that way. You, this, this takes into account, too, of that 2008 decline, and um, it, it did get in bullish territory there, during that decline, um, I don't know if we're going to turn in like 2008 or not. I think there is one more decline coming that will probably test at least last Friday's low, maybe break a little bit below it to really finally uh, um, get everybody, I guess, out of the market that are in weak hands, or the market that is in weak hands, get them out before the rally actually starts. So, But we're getting close. Uh, we're in the process, I think, of pounding out of bottom according uh, to chart number one. And I don't know if it's quite complete yet, and it may take another several more weeks to, to finalize it, but in the past, this is an area that has usually been pretty good uh, for near midterm low forming. So I don't think we're just going to keep heading down and down. I think we're awful close to some sort of near midterm low. And I'm not sure we've seen, seen the final low. I got a couple other charts. Um, that'll show you that maybe uh, uh, we're pounding out a low, but the final low may have not been seen. So, um, anyhow, I, I do look at feminine indicators. They kind of give you a bigger view of what goes on, gives, you know, what the thought process of what the public is doing. And normally the public's on the wrong side of the market most of the time. So this is an indicator that kind of suggests that we're, the public's pretty bearish here. And, um, that's usually a good intermediate term sign. So um, we can go on to chart two if you want. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if anybody wants to ask any questions to Tim, uh, make sure and uh, either call us at 877-927-6648 or email me at path at tfnn.com. I already emailed uh, one for you to take a look at during the break. If you want, we'll go. We've got chart two up here now. Okay. This has really been a good indicator. Uh, this chart goes back, to, I think, uh, uh, 2015. And the top window um, is the average uh, arms index on the close for the last 10 days. And the arms index is kind of a screwy, but actually Richard Arms developed it back uh, years ago, I think in the 70s. And it's the um, advancing issues divided by the declining issues and divide that by the up volume, divide by the down volume. So it takes in the advanced decline, it takes in the up-down volume and it washes out into a ratio. And uh, so one easy number to look at, you can kind of define uh, what if you get readings up around 1.5 or higher, in general, it shows there's more volume hitting the declining issues. When it's down below uh, 0.5, say, then it shows more up volume on the advancing issues, and that's usually a bullish sign. Well, ironically, that turns out to be kind of a contrarian indicator, because if you get readings around 0.5 several in a day, it shows too much euphoria, and it's usually heading for a decline. And the opposite is also concerned, or the opposite is is also in play where it gets up around 1.5 or higher, it shows too many volume on the down stocks. And that's usually kind of a climatic situation. And so going in to the June low, we got it above, uh, above 1.4. And also going into the current low, we got it up at 1.4. So that's 1.4 on average for 10 days. So that's a lot of, of, uh, you know, I guess hitting the bids there uh, for 10 straight days to really get that reading up that high. So it kind of shows the exhaustion move to the downside. And um, 
And those really, those red lines going back show the times when the 10-day average uh, did get above uh, 1.5. So it happened at the March 2020 low. It happened back in the... Uh, um, uh, well, my sight's not that good. 2018, there was a worthwhile low in there. Um, back in 2015, 2016, and all these, uh, most of them came in and uh, really massive lows. So, uh, so we we do have panic in the market, and panic only forms at bottoms. We'll so. be back in a minute with uh, Tim Ord. Check your email there, Tim. And uh, if you want these charts, uh, email me at pat, pfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back with uh, Tim Ord now, and uh, we're looking at uh, chart two. So continue on. A panic, anything, anything that kind of does with panic, I'm kind of try to zero in on it. And that's why VIX, I use quite a bit of stuff with the VIX and uh, the trend and the ticks. You know, I kind of watch all that stuff, but but the uh, the ten day average of the um, arms index above 1.4 usually indicates you're you're starting to bang out and you're going to term low. So I don't think this is extended decline that's going to keep breaking new lows here. I think um, I, I still think we'll we'll probably see a minor new low, but not a, a major downtrend has started here. It's, it looks like kind of the ending stage. And also, these now kind of plays important to it. 
Um, you know, a lot of times you see major lows in October, maybe November. So I think uh, the low is probably going to, my opinion, probably still form this month. Uh, so I'm thinking there's there's one more down here coming to kind of satisfy everything. So we'll see how it plays out. But uh, but anyhow, this is in bullish territory, and and um, um, we we can actually uh, I did get that email on uh, Exxon Mobil Oil. Okay, we can talk about that, that if you want. We can. Did you send me a chart? Oh, I thought they sent you a chart. <laughs> no, no, I can pop, I, I can pop one up. I just wanted to make sure I didn't need to look in email to take a look at it. I've got one up. Okay, and you know, if you go back to you know, it broke out of major basing period. Uh, well, it actually broke above some previous highs. There was a huge resistance at that seventy area on Exxon, and you know, and. The election came, and uh, they voted in the, uh, the Democrat Party, and they were against uh, the um, kind of the energy sector. So it took a big, big uh, run down in '20. That turned out to be the bottom, and got enough energy to rally above 70. Uh, and if you look at it, actually compare the uh, uh, XOM or Exxon to the SPX, is has been outperforming the SPX since about mid-2020 and it's still outperforming. And I don't, you know, that's worst case scenario. It's got massive support at 70 because that's the trend line that goes back for years. And uh, I see now we're trying to break out to new highs. I'm not sure we have the volume to really do it right here. The market really hasn't done anything for the last six months. I mean, it's bounced around between 85 to 100 range. Um, and the volume's kind of dropping off. kind of looks like this could be a consolidation phase, in my opinion, and mark the halfway point move in the next move up. That's a possibility. I'm not sure what it is, but um, the Bollinger Bands are, or the mid Bollinger Bands heading higher. So, in general, it's, it's in an uptrend here. You know, how high is high? It's really kind of hard to say, but it's kind of but the, the um, it, you know, if you look at the uh, decline in the, uh, uh, SPX obviously is, is bucked that trend, so it's kind of a trend of its own right now, uh, away from the SPX. So uh, this looks pretty good. Um, how high is high? It's, it really is hard to say. A lot of projections come if you take the bottom of uh, that pattern, which is around 25 to the top, which is 70. Call it 75. So you had by, um, uh, 50 points to the breakout area, which is 70. So it comes in around 120 for a projection, a possible projection to the next high, which is still, you know, 20% higher than where we are right now. So it doesn't look like it's, in my opinion, doesn't look like it's any topping form pattern forming here. Uh, so, you know, trends up. So how high is high? You know, I guess projection one is around 120. You can you come up with a bunch of other stuff, but along as it stays uh, above the mid Bollinger Band on the weekly time frame, I, you know, it's it's a good, good indication that this one will probably move much higher. So it looks pretty good, in my opinion, for the intermediate term, even longer term. So, yeah, anyhow, that's uh, my take on on Exxon. Okay, and that was for Hector. Um, so, uh, we we'll, uh, uh, if you've got a question for Tim, uh, go ahead and email or call in at 877-927-6648. Uh, let's go back uh, to the chart here. And uh, on this one, are we done with uh, number two? Yeah, I think we've seen panic in the uh, trend, and it, it reached a, a level where intermediate term blows normally form. Uh, you know, it's, it's not saying the bottom's in right now. I, I, I'm thinking there's one more decline coming, but... It's in a bottoming area, so I think most of the decline is done. So, but moving on to uh, the next one, which is uh, kind of used this over the years as another kind of a climatic indicator, and the top window is NYSE summation index, and it's kind of a rule of thumb, I guess, when you get below minus 700, which um, 
this chart goes back to it looks like about 2015 area and it kind of shows all the previous declines happened in that time frame you had a 2016 decline you had a 2019 decline you had the 20 uh march 20 uh, decline now you got this one um actually if you go to the bottom window usually a good indication you're you're into a washout low was the mccall and Oscar usually gets below uh, 400 and on september 26 we hit minus 420 which pretty much satisfies the my climatic move to the downside and i, I marked other times there when uh with blue um blue uh lines that other times when it hit below minus 400 so i'm calling oscar it got below minus 400 and the summation index which is the top window Usually when you get down below minus 700, it's usually a good indication that the market has reached a pretty much a sold out level according to the advanced decline line. And then that summation index is kind of a, um, you know, a, a exotic advanced decline line is what it is. And uh, marked other times when that happened on, on in 2020, matter of fact, or 2022, we hit below minus 700 this is the third time. So the market really kind of just blew apart to the downside, you know, back in, it looks like about April, then another time in in June, and now we're hitting it again in October. Uh, so uh, it's pretty oversold. And this time around, finally, the oscillator, along with the summation index, both got below uh, washout levels. So we're in a kind of a climatic bottom formation here. Uh, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens next. To really confirm that the uh, intermittent term bottom is, you like to see minus 700 on the McCall and oscillator, then rally within around two months to reach above plus 1,000. And uh, we tried to, to get going back in that uh, let's see, the, uh, August, uh, the August rally. And we didn't quite get to uh, plus 1,000. We got up to plus around 800. Then the market fell back down again and got oversold below as minus 700 on the summation index. So the next time up, we need to see it get to b- above plus 1,000 to really confirm a low. Well, we've got one more chart and a couple of questions, so we'll uh, get to that in the next segment with Tim Ord. <laughs> Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, uh, got some questions we'll answer in a minute after we go through your last uh, chart here, Tim. But uh, we've got a couple questions on gold, uh, but specifically on GDX. Uh, anyway, uh, back to uh, are we done with chart three? Or you want to go to back to that? No, uh, done with chart three. That's good. Okay. And, and so I'm uh, looking chart at chart four, four here. Yeah, it's just a, kind of a daily chart. Um, I think the character of market is starting to change. The reason why I'm saying the character of market is kind of changed where the sell signals in the past worked really well, and now the buy signals are starting to work pretty well. And um, not ideal yet, but uh, I do a lot of stuff with volume. Uh, if you notice that big spike uh, where I have an open gap there, that that big spike in volume is last Friday's um, trading. So you had a big spike. Normally, that's kind of exhaust move to the downside. When you get a kind of a spike in volume, a lot of times I'll at least stall the market on a short-term basis. And I'm talking about a spike in volume. Uh, at least 30%, you know, the higher the spike in volume, the more stunned, I guess, or stalled the market will become either direction. So if you see a... Uh, spike in volume, say 100%, uh, whatever, of uh, the previous days, that usually just stalls the market on a short-term basis. So on Friday, you had, looks like, about a 30% jump in volume, and that's kind of a signal that you're probably an exhaust move to the downside. Anyhow, the market gapped up the next day. That would be Monday of this week, and uh, it tested another gap of last Wednesday. Anyhow, it kind of blew through that gap, an open kind of a an island there, uh, but when it jumped, this would be uh, today's Thursday, so this would be uh, Wednesday's. No, it'd be uh, Tuesday's trading. You had jumped above a previous high, and that jump above previous high on uh, at least ten percent lighter volume usually is a false breakout to the upside. Then yesterday, you tested uh, Wednesday's high. Another drop about 10% volume. So the market's really having kind of a difficult time trying to go up here. The volume's not, you know, you're trying to break out above the previous high and doesn't really have the energy to keep pushing higher. But today we're kind of at the midpoint of yesterday's trading. And so the market's kind of undecided what to do. It tried to go up, couldn't go up. So I'm thinking we may go back down uh, to Monday's gap is what I'm thinking. That's what it's starting to look like. And it maybe even break a little bit. Uh, normally, the more panic you have at a bottom, the more secure that bottom becomes. So if you get minor panic at a bottom, it's usually a minor low. If you get major panic, uh, then it's a, usually a major, major bottom. And we had pretty decent panic at last Friday's low, but if you look at the VIX and some other stuff, it didn't really spike that much. It did get into, you know, 34, I think it was, on the VIX. But ideally, you like to really see it jump up around 40 or, or thereabouts, or a high 30s at least. And I'm thinking that's probably where we're going to head, take a shot at last Friday's low, and everybody's going to be screaming, 
you know, bloody murder and all this other stuff. And I think that's where you get your your durable low coming in. So, you know, that's my short term view of the market. I think you know, near term, we're been, we're pounding out a bottom, and on a short term basis, uh, we may take another shot at um, at the recent lows, if not break to a minor new low. And uh, depends on what the VIX does, what the trend does, and some other panic indicators do. Will, will that be the final low or or not? So, but I'm thinking we're we're awful close to a minute term low. I just don't quite think we've seen it yet. So that's my view for the market. So probably you know we may be uh, uh, get market may be mixed all the way into what no, November eighth is the election is that or November seventh? Um, Something like that. So I think could, it's forty days away. Maybe it's, there. Uh, yeah. So, market could uh, maybe that's what's going on here. The market uh, is kind of trying to decide who's going to be, you know, are, uh, are the Republicans going to hold the House or uh, or the Senate and whatever, or the Democrats going to keep control of it? Don't know. And the market's trying to decide which uh, what it's, it's going to do, I guess. So the market doesn't know yet, uh, but the market will figure it out way before. The general public uh, figures it out. Seem the, the market seems to be uh, the smartest uh, indicator. So, um, anyhow, I was trying to figure out is it if um, if certain party takes over, you know, the Senate or something like that, that'll be kind of a readjustment of uh, some of the stocks in the NYSE, whatever, because of uh, different powers will come to power here. So, I'm thinking the market is. It could be jittery in, into that election, so I'm thinking that's what's going on here. Okay, we got about near mid term low is pounding out here. We've got so, uh, got three minutes left. Uh, any calls on the GDX here? Yeah, I got a 50 day average of the uh, up down volume advance line indicators, and when you got below my uh, this 50 day average, when you got below minus um, 20 on both indicators. It's usually led to an imminent term indicator, and what's kind of unusual about those indicators uh, is once it hits below minus 20 on both of them, the market usually trends sideways or even mostly down a little bit for several weeks. Well, the, both those indicators hit below minus 20 back in mid-July, and now they're just uh, starting to perform uh, above zero. When it's above zero, usually the market's considered an uptrend. And the market uh, did retrace from that mid-July low until this recent low we had here, what, in uh, late September. So I'm thinking this this uh, rally coming off the low it was up, what, six days in a row. And it really showed decent volume come off the low. So I'm thinking the September 25th low uh, was the bottom. And uh, as long as... The 50-day average of the up-down volume and 50-day average of the advanced decline remain near zero or above. The uptrend is intact, and right now it's above zero on both of them. So I'm thinking the bottom was September 25th. So I'm reading it. So how high, high? I don't know. But if you get above the previous low, which is around 29 on GDX, and that would imply a false breakout to the, the downside, of that trading range would imply that you can't hold below the previous lows. They'll try to take out the previous highs. Well, the previous highs is around 40. So if we get above 30, I think, then we're at least heading back to the 40 range. So that's fairly near term, I guess. could take several weeks or months to do all that, but that's how I'm reading the market. So I'm thinking we're, we're turning the corner. Okay. I want to thank uh, Tim Orr to the Orr-Oracle for being on again. If you want any of these charts, just email me at pathtfnn.com, and I'll be glad to send them out to you so you can follow along. Uh, but uh, that's about it. We'll see uh, Tim in about uh, two more weeks, hopefully, and uh, have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. You bet.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get to uh, finish up the day, starting to see a little bit of a slide as I said, uh, not uncommon to see maybe about a 1% pullback uh, when fund buying's over. That was, I was, uh, I said in the newsletter, I thought I'd be in probably in the first couple of hours this morning. So you get a little bit of that. Uh, probably a little people uh, ringing the register before the jobs numbers in the morning at 8.30. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, I don't have any real good feeling on jobs numbers. Um, I continue to think that there's going to be some good sectors and bad sectors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and uh, I'm kind of focusing on energy at the moment, although there are others. But that's kind of it. Uh, volume so far in the day is fairly light, uh, just doing a little over 7.1 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated volume tape. If you ever want the, the link to that so you can follow along at home, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com and I'll be glad to send it to you. Other than that, it's uh, just uh, the end of fund buying. Not surprising to see a little bit of a pullback. Uh, tomorrow is probably going to be a much bigger idea. If we get a lot of people shorting uh, probably tonight and maybe get a little bit of surprise, uh, you might find this market holding up uh, through the close tomorrow and into China coming back for those folks that may want to 
uh, think that they had a fear of missing out of the big rally in the United States, or at least the U.S. markets. But uh, we shall see. Um, see if there's anything else out here. I was going to say probably the biggest thing I saw uh, that uh, was interesting to me was just the strength of the uh, dollar. Oop, don't have that up here right now. And we're out of time. But uh, certainly came off 110 in the DX very sharply. And uh, that's still holding. Well, that's pretty much it. So when you can, not when you have to, and we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.